Alright guys, so I've got a pretty um, special video today. I'm going to be going through all different types of body composition analysis. Uh, bioelectrical impedance, skin folds, uh, DEXA scan, and hydrostatic weighing. So it would be really good to get a comparison between all four and um, see like kind of how they compare. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with my home, home scales here. So these are pretty common, lots of people have these, they um, use bioelectrical impedance to tell you your body fat percentage. So I'm going to go through that now. Alright, so I'd hazard a guess I'm maybe 12-13%, somewhere around that. Ninety-seven point five, nine point one percent body fat. Okay, ready. So, start. Thirteen point one percent body fat. Be my twenty-seven point two. So guys, the skin fold test that we used was the Dernan Wormsley one. So it's a foresight uh, test. So you can see here, using the calipers to measure the subcutaneous fat of the bicep, tricep, subscap, and um, iliac crest. So you basically take three measurements at each site going one through the other, and then you take an average of that, and then there's a calculation that um, Dernan and Wormsley came up with uh, that works out your body fat percentage. So these are the results. Then you plug that into the calculation and it works out 15.5% body fat which as you can see puts me at uh, lean to leaner than average for my age bracket for men. So we also measured our waists and hips to determine the ratio between the two because if your waist is a lot bigger than your hips obviously you've got a lot more belly fat um, and then that means that you're at risk for diseases associated with obesity. So for men you want to be under 0.9 ratio as you can see I'm 0.88 and then if your waist is bigger than 92 centimeters for men uh, that puts you at risk and then at 104 centimeters you're quite at risk for those issues related to obesity. Okay so moving on to the hydrostatic test before you perform the hydrostatic test you first need to calculate your residual lung volume that's basically the amount of air or space that's still left in your lungs after a maximum expiration so you can see here this device is measuring my maximum expiration. You basically have to blow out as hard and as fast as you can and keep blowing out until every bit of air is out of your lungs. Uh, it's pretty hard to do and very uncomfortable. So you can see my face, a couple of in these is going pretty red. And that one I had a nice cough halfway through. You pitched out halfway through. Yep. I cough. I was like, and Gab got that on the Yep. 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 This is painful. Smash it. Yeah, good. <laughs> so there are the results. So basically the way hydrostatic tests work, you hop in the pool and because fat weighs less than water and muscle and bone is uh, more dense than water, the more buoyant you are in this chair that's attached to a scale, the more fat you have. So you have to expire every bit of air in your lungs, so that's not making you more point than what you actually are. 
So yeah, yeah. it's uh, just your fat that's like yeah. making you float that little bit. So this is all to calculate your body density, and then from that body density, you work out from calculations your body fat percentage. So it's quite difficult for the subject. Um, it's basically the same as that residual lung test I did. You have to exhale every bit of air, keep going, you feel like you're about to drown, you really need to take a breath, but you still need to keep exhaling. So these are the results. So you do a few different attempts, work out an average, plug it in, and as you can see here, it um, gave me 21.9, which is uh, pretty interesting, quite an over-exaggeration, I would say. Okay, so I'm going to get my DEXA scan today. So this is what I'm looking like this morning. And let's have a look at the scales. Okay, so definitely don't think I'm 8.5%. Uh, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, we'll see what the DEX comes out with today. It's uh, a lot more reliable than most of the other measures that I've done, especially a lot more reliable than the uh, home scales. But yeah, we'll see. Okay, just got back from the imaging uh, center. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take any video of the uh, DEXA, but it's basically just like a bed or like a bench that you lie on it's got an arm that comes over you and scans back and forth um, apparently I was too broad to fit on the machine which you know, I don't know when what they do when they get really big people but um, yeah so uh, my left arm was kind of cut out of the image but they just took an estimate um, and the tips of my toes were cut off as well but yeah there's not much fat there and so they can't take that into consideration with the uh, calculations and so it's still like very reliable it's just a bit of an estimate because it didn't have like the lower half of my left arm uh, but anyway I have my results 13.1 percent fat a bit over 12 kilograms worth of fat mass I had to use 79.75 kilograms of lean mass okay so as you can see for my age and height it puts me on the lower percentile of uh, so below average body fat BMI which is still useless has me as well into the overweight category uh, another cool thing about uh, DEXA is it gives you your bone mineral density which mine is uh, well above average so this would be like osteoporosis down here in the red whereas yeah I'm uh, green would be average so I'm well into the uh, above average, which is really good. Uh, my breakdown region of a uh, fat percentage. Yeah, so 13.1 total. My arms don't really carry a lot of fat, which is cool. A fair bit of fat in my legs, trunks, trunk. And um, so gynoid is a uh, hip fat and android is uh, waist fat so yeah I'm carrying a little bit more fat around my hips and my waist but it's like pretty even they have a uh, android to gynoid ratio so yeah, it's like almost the same so that's the uh, DEXA scan yeah skin folds pretty accurate um, don't know what went on with the hydrostatic as I said like pretty much all the guys we had high values mine was well into the 20s uh, which was quite surprising, but yeah, so. So I will just add in at this point that um, when I made this, I'd forgotten about the uh, bioelectrical impedance, the handheld one conducted at uni. Uh, that was right on the money, 13.1%. Uh, so even though, like, they're not that reliable, that one, I don't know if it just lucked out or if it actually was pretty reliable, because um, it can change a lot depending on like your hydration level, stuff like that. Uh, whereas Dex is more 
consistent. But um, yeah, that one was smack on 13.1. Obviously, the uh, Dexer is um, a bit more reliable, a bit more accurate. The uh, home scales severely underestimating that body fat percentage. Uh, home scales are fine to use uh, if you use them regularly, just to kind of like like keep track of where you're at. If you're going up or down, not the total value of you know telling me that I'm eight percent body fat. So yeah, there we have it. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope um, that was kind of informative. Gives you a bit of an idea of the dis different um, like testing methods for body composition out there. Um, so this is a good place to start, 13.1% body fat. Um, so now I can like track that as I go. Um, you know, may maybe try and lean out a little bit more. I don't know. But yeah, we'll see.